we're going to grab a heavy band and we're going to put the feet out in front. As everybody comes in, just realize I'll repeat the cues. Now with your legs long, you're going to cross your band. You're going to hold on to your tubing and we're going to start by warming up the back and warming up the breath. So here we go with an exhale. Hello, good job, hello. Five, you're tall, you're pulling. Six, you're gonna feel your back. Seven, warming up. Eight, we'll move a little to see your beautiful faces. Nine, 10, now we're gonna do 10 more. 11, and neck is easy. 12, spine tall, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. All right, now here we go. We're gonna turn and pull, and exhale, turn and pull the other way. Now notice what your rotational flexibility is to the right and to the left. Often one side uh, is a little bit easier to rotate. And if you have that, just spend a tiny bit more attention on that tighter side. See if it'll go more with your conscious effort. All right, we're gonna do 10 more. As you rotate, you can even flip your palm to be face up, which is called supinated, like you have a cup of soup in it. As you rotate and you pull, palm up on that arm. Four, three, two, and one. Really good. Now I'm going to take a more medium band if you have that do, and if not, just use what you have and change your grip. A more medium band. Take the legs out in front. Pull your arms low while you sit tall. Actually, let's take that off. All right, pull the arms low. So you're tall. Your arms are like the letter V upside down. Your neck is easy. Four, shoulders are down the back. Five, give yourself a challenge of pulling a little bit further, like a millimeter further. And then one other challenge is to resist the return of the band. The band wants to spring you back, but you're gonna consciously slow the return down. So you're getting to work out on the pull and the return, the positive and the negative, the concentric, the eccentric. All right, here we go. And we need muscle strength in all the ways. All right, here we go. Like when you go downhill, you need that eccentric muscle strength in your quad. All right, we're on downstairs. When people don't have that, that's when they fall going down. So we're, we're working the both. Four, three, two, and one. Now, before we move on, I want you to just sit however is comfortable. We're gonna take a little uh, rotational stretch. We warmed up the rotation. Now we're holding a stretch. This stretch is really good for the posture to stay upright. We need to rotate our spine when we're walking and this is a stretch that'll help maintain that. So if we can't rotate our spine when we're walking, we end up getting rounded as a compensatory motion. So open up the arms. Now you're exhaling going to the other side. If you notice you have a tighter side, you can stay there an extra breath or two. Upper back is your focus. Keep rotating, keep turning. And then gently come back. Grab a sip if you'd like. Here we go. Now we stretch the legs back out, and I'm gonna take a, a medium band. Take that medium band around the feet. Cross the rope, cross the band. Place your elbows really close to your body. Keep the elbow and the upper arm, the humerus, close to your body. The neck is easy. And exhale as you open up just your forearms. Yes, external rotation. Control the return so the band doesn't just snap your arms back to the front. You're exhaling as you open. So good for the shoulder health. This helps keep the shoulders from rounding forward. It helps keep the 
back of the uh, shoulders to uh, strong like the front. The front of our shoulders get used all the time in daily tasks, so it's really important to work the back side of the shoulder so that we don't get rounded shoulders or overuse injuries from the front always doing all the work because our eyes are forward, that's what normally happens. All right, so these are super important for three more, two more. Now on the one, without any band, just kind of move your shoulders in some circles, get some circulation in there. And then we're gonna be taking our uncrossed position with the band. The hands, so I do not have a crossed band. The hands go wide, um, opening up like a letter T, but a little lower than shoulder height, not next to the floor, but still lower than shoulder height. And stay tall, good. Your crown has an imaginary golden thread lifting up through your crown, through your upper back. And now the full breath, feel the back of your shoulder. It, it needs the attention. This is so good. All right, here we go. Six more. Five, and work that return. Four, three, two. Now on the one, I'm gonna give a couple options here. One option is hang on closer to the tubing and bend your elbows while upright. If you have osteoporosis or a facet syndrome, that may be your choice. If you would like to add on a little scoop, a little flexion, and you tolerate flexion, uh, so apparently healthy spine, then you can exhale and do a little ab crunch with this bicep curl. Lifting your elbows also makes it harder. So if it's too hard, lower your elbows. If it's a little too easy, lift your elbows and you're, if you're leaned back, you're probably looking at the top of your toes for appropriate neck alignment. Feel those biceps. And five, four, three, two, and then one. Now, when you come up, this is a stretch, so you can release your band and take one arm up and the fingers point away. Once that's settled, one arm up and the fingers point away. Now, soft elbow, here we go, lift the heart. Now your neck is still safe, so you probably have an imaginary pomegranate underneath your chin. Lift that heart. Five, four, three, two, inhale. And then exhale. Really good job, guys. Take a sip. And the muscles have warmed up and we're gonna do a line down chest press. So you may need a heavier weight for this. I'm gonna say somewhere between five and 12 pounds in each hand. And you're gonna take the weight nearby so that when you go down, you don't have to struggle for it. Now we can use our abs to roll down. And once you're down, your feet are on the floor. Now your hands are gonna be, so I've got my elbows or my upper arm beside my ribs. Exhale and we're gonna push up and the weights are not touching on this one and we're gonna bend the elbows near our body. Now uh, exhale, push up and then bend. Now I'm gonna give a few more cues with your, while you keep going. With your feet on the floor, it's much easier to keep your ribs down. So that's gonna help your low back from getting over arched. So you'll exhale and push up, and you'll inhale and you'll lower. You'll exhale, you push up. And what you can also do is feel like every time you exhale, there's a little bit of a belly pull in. A little bit of a belly pull in. So maybe 5%. Exhale. Exhale. Notice you're controlling the weights on the way down. You're not just drooping or dropping your arms down to the floor, plopping. Exhale. Good. Feet are on the floor. There's a little exhale to pull your belly in, like right before you cough or yell, that kind of transverse abdominal corseting of the belly pulling into the spine. That's what we're looking for. Make sure your head and neck are comfortable. Uh, if the head feels awkward, like the chin is lifted and you can't do anything about it or you can't correct it, 
then you, generally you need a little pillow under your head. All right, take three more. Exhale. Take two more. And take one more. Now release the hand weights to the side, reach through your fingers, reach through your toes, and give a full body stretch. Now, when you're ready, I'm gonna have you come up and do an ab crunch. So if you can, inhale. Use your abdominals to come up to a seated position. Nice, if not, just come up any way you can. Now you're gonna take between three and five pounds on this next one. And you're gonna be uh, lying on the ground so that you're between three and five pounds. So a three, a four, a five. Um, a two would be really modified. That's another option if you need to. And you have this hand weight here Glue your elbow to your side. Now open up your arm to the side. So this is a one arm external rotation. So Betty, if you want, turn sideways and then let your arm be a pillow to look at me. Yeah, on this one. Now I like the knee bent because it keeps, uh, it's easier to balance than to having the leg straight. So the knee bent is also nice on your back. Your wrist is neutral. And what I mean by that, it looks like a piece of plywood. It's not bending excessively either way or extending. Good. And you notice this is more therapeutic in nature. 11, it's the back of those shoulders. Keep your wrist neutral. And you might think of an open door, a door opening. One more. Now you can leave your band, excuse me, you can leave your hand weight here and you can move your body around it. That way you're not picking up a weight as you're doing something else in an awkward position. Now this arm is the pillow. Your elbow's in by your side and your your wrist is like a piece of plywood. Your wrist is flat. Good. Breathing. Eight, make sure your neck is happy. Remember, you can always grab a pillow if you need to keep your neck happy. None of the joints should hurt while we're working out the muscles. In fact, they're getting synovial fluid, so they're actually getting lubricated. The body's meant to move. Two, good, here we go. All right, now take a little breather and we're going to lie on your back. This is your challenge if you would like it. You can inhale and exhale. Use your abs to come back up. And if you need to come up a different way, do. Okay, really good. Now I'm gonna change my position of how I'm sitting. So if you would like, you can sit Crisscross applesauce, if you can sit kneeling, sit kneeling, that's great. Grab a medium band, take it behind your head, take the other hand at your lower spine. Now you can sit any way you want that is comfortable for you, but I do encourage you to try different ways of getting on the floor. This is functional mobility, sitting on the floor in all the different ways. Four, good. Now this is the back of the arm, five, really important. Six, if we were to fall, this is the muscle that catches us usually. Eight, we want this muscle strong. Nine, now we're doing 10 more, 10. Exhale as you push and try to lengthen your elbow if you can. Right here, try to lengthen it. 13, good. 14, 15, and I like that back of the arm should be feeling some warmth. 16. Mm -hmm. Yep, the hat's in the way. <laughs> Shereen means business. The hat's out of the way. Let's do one more. Here we go. Exhale. That arm is, should be fatigued. Take this hand behind your head. This hand, the, the name of this stretch uh, exercise also has a nickname, uh, shave the back of the head. So that's how close it is to the back of your head. Push two, three, four, five, and Michelle, make sure your body's not tilted to the arm that's low. It's not tilted right. Make sure your clavicle is over your ribs, is over your pelvis. There you go. You wanna make sure you're not leaning into that bottom arm. You're tall? Good, if you don't feel it, grab more band. You want to feel that tricep work. It's such an important muscle. Lift up through the chin. We're trying to practice that ear in line with the shoulder posture from the side view. Lift the chin, the chin's parallel to the floor. Exhale, push. Good, try three more. 
push, take two more, take one more, woo, all right, take a little breather. Now, before we go up, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna stretch that shoulder. You can sit any way you want, inhale, 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 woo, feels good. Such a good stretch for the back and the shoulders. Here we go, inhale, and exhale, up and over. Up and over, up and over, up and over. Inhale, and come back up. Now make sure nothing's underfoot. Make sure you won't trip on anything. The next challenge, and this is very functional, and it's a, um, it's a way to assess your functional age. One foot forward. Let your back toes help you. Yep, we're gonna grab a sip too. And stand up with no hands. Now, once you're up, grab a sip. I'm gonna just tilt my screen up. That's the challenge. If you need to touch, of course, do. But that's the challenge. That's gonna um, help with functional youth. All right, you're gonna grab some hand weights that'll let you do a bicep curl. So I want you to find probably a five to 10, somewhere in there. And we're going to take the exhale to pull up the biceps. Now, you could do it supinated like I'm doing, or you could do a hammer curl. Let me show you that one. Good, I want your joints to feel fabulous. Good, Michelle, that's it, six. Now, slow seven. Now, make sure your body isn't doing this with the bicep curl. So your body's upright and stable. Your elbow is extending, your elbow is flexing, but you're not using your body to do it. Good. Now, put the shoulders down the back so they're not forward at all, they're down the back. Good. And we're breathing through the nose if you can. If uh, you ever find that difficult, you can breathe through your mouth. But during class, we're going to shoot for breathing in the nose, breathing out the nose. It helps the parasympathetic system. Breathing fully also helps the pelvic floor. All right, let that hand weight down for a moment. Grab a sip as well. And for balance, uh, this is a glute strength. Now you can take your foot up on your anything, your calf or your inner thigh. That's glute strength right here. And then grab your shoulder stretch. So try two things. One-legged balance is really important predictor of falling. So if you cannot hold your balance, there's a higher chance of falling on one leg, I mean. So what we try to do is do all the things that help prevent that. The glute is contracting, so it should feel like it's on. Now the hands come together, that foot comes down, shift your weight. And when you do a one-legged balance, you're never kicking your hip out, you've got your hips level. So keep the hips level. And if everything's going okay there, you can take a shoulder stretch. Your fingers are working their way towards each other if they're not already there. And if they are there, work on clasping them. Uh, ribs are over the hips. Clavicle is over the ribs. Good, now get ready. The dynamic balance is to let go of the hands and then let the foot back down. Nice job. All right, now we're gonna do a lateral raise. It looks like this. So it's a lighter weight, because you can tell it's a longer level, lever. So maybe somewhere between three and six pounds. And there it is. Yep, grab a sip if you need. You're doing great, guys. Isn't it nice to have all the tools at home? Make it a very easy to stick to pattern, like the book Atomic Habits. You're trying to make all of the healthy things that you want to do very easy to do. The weights are at home, the bands are at home. Good. Six. Neck is soft. Seven. Success. Set yourself up for success. Eight. Nine. Knees soft. Ten. And just listen to your body. Most of us are just going to go to shoulder height and not higher. 
If you need to decrease your range of motion for another shoulder issue, then please do. You're going to listen to your body. Good. I like that controlled uh, way down. So let's do that for five here where we go up and we control it on the way down. We go up and we go up and we go up and one. All right, now with your hand weights low, just kind of move your shoulders into circles. Really good. Now we're gonna take the hand weights Right here, there's a feeling like they're on a shelf. You almost don't have to work. Do you feel that? And then push up and bend. Now, if you need to change weights, please do. Three, neck is soft. When you push up, make sure your head doesn't jump forward. Five, feel like your abs are helping you keep the back from getting lower dotted. Seven, eight, Nine, ten, breathing in through the nose, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20. All right, let's let that down. Let's grab a sip. Good job, guys. And then we'll take a little uh, knocking on the door of life. Grab a sip. Knocking on the door of life is a, a physiological release. It helps calm the activity between the right and left brain. Anytime you cross the midline like this, breathe in. So just letting go of all the tension. Now we're going to take the uh, hand weights that you used, probably a three to six pound to do these front raises. And the hands are only going to go to shoulder height, most likely, not higher. And if you have a modification, it would be that you decrease even that height. So I want you to listen to your body. Notice I'm not leaning back, that I'm not letting the weights move my body. I'm moving the weights. Good, neck is easy. Nice. All right, keep going if you can, 10 more. Now, if you need to modify, the mo another modification would be do one at a time. Mm -hmm. Kind of like walking, but otherwise, let's keep at it. Good, and feel how nice it is to have strong shoulders. All right, that was really good. Let's get rid of those for just a moment. And I'm gonna give you one of two stretches. Interlaced fingers is the first possibility. See how that's a shoulder stretch for posture. The second possibility is flip your hands in a prayer pose. All right, now, this is dynamic balance. Add on five circles with one leg while you're in that stretch. Dynamic balance. Try not to touch the floor. Go the other way. Five, four, three, dynamic balance, two. All right, let's do the other side. Good, that right glute's strong. And take five, you're also strengthening that left leg. Or, ooh, feel that leg balancing you. And then try the other side. Five, keep that shoulder open, those shoulders open. Good, feel how your muscles are trying to find your balance. Super good, let that go, shake it out, let me see. Let's do one more quickie. Grab your band and put it in the medium, medium band, uh, medium to medium plus, palms underhanded. Now, we're gonna do some breath stroke. Let's get this uh, added on. Are you guys ready? So here's the breath stroke. If you're doing okay, let's add it on. Let's add on a calf raise. This is a move you can do anytime at the gas station. Pumping gas. Thank 
you're taking a phone call, you're waiting on your coffee. So you, this is so good for vascular uh, health as well. If you've had to be seated for a long time, this would be a great exercise to do. All right, the other way. So each toe has equal weight. In other words, your ankle is strong and long and you're not biasing your pinky when you go up, which could be the tendency. The ankle tends to invert, but not under our watch. We're practicing. Good, all right, try three more. This is also great for knee health. Three, two, and then one of my favorite stretches ever, take that band, go up and back. Um, this should feel like your shoulders, I'll show you from the side, your shoulders are open. Now breathe in, go a little lower. Breathe, this is so good for posture to help prevent rounded shoulders and rounded upper back. That looks so good. All right, take another one. Let that go. Now uh, take a, as wide a stance as you want. Take a full breath in. We're gonna invite wellness to all of the cells of our body. Inhale in, we're gonna invite wellness to all of the cells of our mind. It's always working in our favor. Inhale, breathe in, invite wellness to your breath, your spirit, that part of you beyond physical. And then we're gonna take a stand in a neutral posture. All four corners of your feet have balance. Your knees are long but soft. Your uh, pelvis is neither tipping back or forward. Your ribs are over your pelvis. Your shoulder blades are down the back, palms open if you can. Your ears are in line with the shoulder from the side view with the head not in front of the body, but in line with the body, nose behind the sternum. Now, as best you can, relax here. So you're using as little energy as you want. You're gonna tell your fascia, this is your neutral. And today I'm going to set an intention of inviting wellness in all of the ways I can, which might be noticing the sunshine, drinking plenty of water, saying good things to people. I'm gonna keep attracting the wellness of my body, mind, and spirit the rest of the day and spread that wellness to the world.